My name is Suzanne Grossman. It's wonderful to see you all here. I'm the internship coordinator here on campus out of the Office of Career Services. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that we're all here for the same reason. You, the students, the representatives from my office, our office, and the faculty members, and importantly, the employers, to talk about internships. This is our director, Mrs. Connie Peluso. So our office is located in L429. I'd also like to thank not only our director, Connie Peluso, who makes all of this possible, but Ms. Sandra Strauss, who is our career advisement and coordinator and placement advisor, Ms. Jane Rogers, who's a placement advisor, Ms. Lucille Sparaccio, our administrative assistant, without whom none of this would take place. So for those of you who are in office administration, uh, technology, we're looking forward to you taking the place of other individuals who we can rely on to to get an, an event like this going. And our college assistant, Ms. Alicia Williams. Uh, we all work in the office to try and provide you with services to help you in your career development. So I hope you'll make use of the office. Um, let me just start by talking about our, our um, internships and, and our office. Internships, uh, what are internships, what, you sh what one can do for you and why you should do one, um, these are all relevant questions and just I'm going to try and go as quickly as I possibly can so you can speak with as many employers as you can. Um, internships are educational professional work settings where you will learn about a business. Most internships are unpaid, however, some are paid. Inter An internship bridges the gap between your classroom learning and a professional work setting. You will learn a variety of skills relevant to your field of study, and you might be able to earn college credits for doing the internship. An internship goes on your resume as professional experience. Your internship will give you firsthand knowledge and may even turn into a job. You can earn college credits by registering for here on campus what's called a cooperative education class. Usually it's related to your department of major. And out of the whole process, you get a whole great letter of recommendation, which when an employer asks you for three letters of recommendation, one from an internship goes a long way. If there are students or graduated students who are vying for a position and one student has internship experience and the other student does not, the student that has demonstrated experience at an internship is usually the more desirable candidate. So keep that in mind. Uh, about the cooperative education class, we have them in just about every department here on campus. You have to have certain criteria, certain um, requirements fulfilled. Generally speaking, the GPA can range in various departments from 2.0, 2.5, 2.7, and in, some, in one department even 3.0. Uh, you have to have a minimum number of credits that each department it varies with. Some it's 24, some it's 5, some 12. Um, one department is uh, a minimum of 30 credits. And some departments may even have where the same way you can't take a math 500 class or a language 500 class before you've taken the more basic classes, the series 100, 200, there may be requirements, educational requirements um, that you have to fulfill in the department. Uh, that's the minimum number of credits in the department overall. In order to gain the credits, it's approximately 30 hours per credit might be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what the curriculum is. So you have to be able, the semester before you want to do an internship for credit, arrange your schedule, register for that cooperative education class, and make sure that you have the time free to go and do the internship so that you can get the credits. Uh, you can earn a maximum here at Queensboro of six credits towards this associate's degree. When you get to the senior college, you can do additional internship credits, but you'll have to follow their requirements. And sometimes, depending on the department, you have to be nominated by a faculty member. So this is some of the criteria to keep in mind. 
There were six criteria that the government um, mandates be followed by the employers in order to make sure that it is an internship. So part of it is your responsibility, but this burden is more on the employer. Um, the training, even though it includes operation of the facility, the uh, of the facilities of the employer, it's similar to what you would get in a vocational school. So it's an extension of your education. You'll be learning while you're doing the internship. The training is for your benefit as the intern. The trainee will not displace another employee, so you're not free labor. The employer that provides the training derives no immediate advantage from the activities of the trainings, and on occasion the operations may even be slowed down. The trainee is not necessarily entitled to a job at the conclusion of the internship, and the employer and trainee understand that the trainee are not entitled to wages for time spent in this training or in this internship. And as long as these factors are met, it is an internship. So that's just so that you can see it. These are the cooperative education class coordinators. These are the faculty that take care of these classes. Because they are out of the classroom experiences, someone here on campus needs to know that you're doing the internship. So here today, um, in biology technology is Dr. Nidhi Ghadora. She's here with us today. Um, in business is Professor Suzanne Diagnes and Mona Seiler. Professor Diagnes is here with us today. Uh, in chemistry, it's distinguished Dr. Paris Veronos, who's here with us to represent the chemistry department. Um, in, let's see who else is here. In social sciences, Dr. Donald Tricarico is here. Uh, to represent many of the liberal arts majors, which I'll go over in a second. And then, um, so this is the full list. Uh, these are the professors that are going to be here with us today. These are questions you might ask faculty. These are questions you might answer, ask employers. They're in your packet, in your folder, or when you came in, you should have gotten a packet and two paper addendums, two handouts. So in the front of the packet is this PowerPoint that you just saw, so you'll have that information to refer to. Then it goes into alphabetically a list of the companies and a description of who and what they are. So you can refer to that. A couple of the tables are a little out of order, so I'm going to cover what those differences are so you can find them. On page 19 is a map with the list, so if you take out a pen, I'm going to give you those changes. Page 19 and 20 are very important. If you look at page 20, it's going to look like, sorry about that, that. And what this is, is this is a list by major of the companies that are here today. So if you're in health-related sciences, you can look it up and you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six companies that are relevant to you that you can make sure to visit. So under business, you can see there are subcategories because in the business major, there's accounting, administration, information technology, which is computer information systems, and marketing. And under liberal arts, there are a number. Criminal justice, education, history, psychology, social work, and urban studies. So this is an aid for you so that you can take advantage in the short time that we have together here to speak to as many employers about the opportunities that they have. As I said, most of the companies are alphabetical. However, a couple of them are out of order. So if you'll turn back to page 19, I'll tell you what's going on. Towards the front of the door where you came in are two tables that are not numbered. Those are 29 and 30. 29 is Gassman and Galadney. They're an investment company, so they're going to be looking for a variety of interns, mostly accounting and business. 30, which is closer to the door, is Oasis, and they are things to do with liberal arts, social work, psychology, education, so look on your, your list, they're listed. 
Um, and tables that were changed, eight and nine have switched places. So KC Pet Connect and the TMS group is now, what says number nine is now number eight. And number eight, Community Youth Care Services is number nine. And table 17 is Safe Horizons. So Safe Horizons, I believe, is with us today, and they're at table 17. Um, and table 17, the New York College of Podiatric Medicine, is not with us. Now, if there's a company that is not present, but the table is here, don't, don't get nervous. We can always contact that company on your behalf. So if there are any, I'm going to just take a couple of questions. If anyone has questions, otherwise I'm going to invite you to join the employers and take advantage of this opportunity. Yes. Okay, that's a specific question to you. I'll answer that. I'll meet you in one second when we're done. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to join the employers and the, okay, I'm sorry, one more thing. The faculty coordinators for business, social science, chemistry and biology, and uh, we're, they're going to be over here at this end. So the companies are going to be here and the faculty coordinators who you can speak to about internships and getting credit towards your degree are going to be sitting over there. So Professor Tricarico, uh, Professor Suzanne DeAgnes, Dr. Zveronos, and Dr. Gadura are going to be over there. And I, I in, urge you to speak with them so that you can implement a plan and take advantage of doing an internship while you're with us. I thank you for your time and attention. I wish you luck and to the employers as well. And let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Thank you.